let's go back to our roots. So they, they just, they, they left the car at the side, went to some scrapyard, got some old banger, mm. and just started driving up to where Gaza was uh, staying. And they apparently, the, the reports say they drove across the golf course, and Evans just kept going and just drove straight into the lock. <laughs> <laughs> and the car sank and they had to swim to the shore. God, this is like a top footballer. Yeah. You know, the insurance on him. <laughs> this is mental. <laughs> so Jimmy Bullard turned to 12, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, th I think, in, in, a, in a way, it's a little bit sad that, because Evans and Baker and those people, I sort of felt bad for Gascoigne, because mm. he's very easily led. He's a flawed individual and he's a wonderful footballer. And it's a shame that he was he was so... That he, I mean, he always had a drinking buddy, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in yeah. a way, that was the undoing of him, you know? Yeah. And his and it, teams were a little bit of sadness. And, but, like you say, we're going to concentrate on the football and the good stuff so absolutely so um he was picked regularly um to help England qualify for the 1998 World yeah, Cup. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he had injuries were coming in and disciplinary uh, problems were affecting his game. Um, and that kind of left him, Hoddle left him out of the 98 World Cup squad famously. Yeah, and he took it well, didn't he? Oh, which was a crying shame for, yeah. for all concerned. But, but he did, he, he, you know, he played uh, extremely well in Rome when England drew nil-nil to yeah. secure qualification. I think people forget yeah. how good an, a, a partnership, you know, him and Paul Lintz had yeah. in the middle. And Beckham as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and, and David Beckham remembers when um, it was... Oh, they were on England duty, and it was when they qualified for the World Cup. And, and, and David Beckham said that, that Gaza turned to him, and he, he said it, Gaza and him got on really well. And he just said, "Oh, David, I love you, and I'm really looking forward to playing at the World Cup with you." Oh no! Oh. And Beckham said it was such a shame looking yeah, back yeah. at it in hindsight. You know, I thought he said he's going to say, "I love you, I'm going to really look after you," and him going, "Oh no, <laughs> 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 I'll look after myself, thanks." Yeah. 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 So I would love to have seen the, the situation where Glenn Hoddle told him he wasn't coming to the to the World oh, Cup, and then Gaza it, smashed. Really. The room. Yeah, yeah. It's just, I mean, it was one of those decisions where Ga Gascoigne, uh, sorry, not Gascoigne, Hoddle had to pick one, two of about three or four players, and yeah, Gascoigne yeah. was unfortunately missed out. I mean, I'm not sure whether that was the right decision or not, looking back on it. Obviously, we didn't do anything in that World Cup, mm. so it may have been the wrong decision, mm. you know. But, I mean, you can never tell. It's just pointless to sort of speculate. But Gascoigne, I think, I remember thinking at the time that he should have been in the squad and I was gutted, yeah. but that may have been more sentimental than anything else. But mm. he took it apparently very badly. Because I think that's what Gascoigne was like. He was, in a, in a lot of ways, he's like a. I don't mean it's disrespectful. He's like a child, mm, very much, and he so. only becomes an adult when he's playing football. Do you that's know what right. I mean? Yeah, that's what he right. lives to do. But it's a bit like I don't know. You know, I would compare him in a, in a sense, in a sense, to y if you watch that sort of Michael Jackson documentary. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't know what he's doing on stage. He's on stage. Yeah, yeah, but exactly. on stage, bang, you I mean, can't beat him. I know the the, the manager and the English FA don't owe Gascoigne a spot in the English squad, sort of permanently. You know, but but imagine how hard it must have been for a character like him to have to watch that World Cup. See, not I, being I, I bet he didn't even watch it. No. Oh, yeah, he probably didn't, know. Well, but just before the World Cup um, in 98, he left Rangers to join Middlesbrough for nearly three and a half million. Mm. First match, it was um, he came on as a substitute in the League Cup final against Chelsea. Um, he didn't have the... He, he did OK at Middlesbrough. There was, there was flashes, but didn't have the best of times. But there were some, there were some antics going oh, on. My favorite, I've got my favourite go one. On. Can I give you it? Go on. He used to go around Paul Merson's house. Yep. And yeah. uh, they used to take as many sleeping pills as they could and have bets on who could stay awake the longest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Merson's a nutcase yeah. as well. They're, 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 that's not, you imagine after. those two together. That would be some sitcom. Well, Merson, <laughs> that's good and Merson. Oh my God. Well, Merson made the 98 World Cup yeah, squad, exactly, of course. Yeah. Um, he once stole the Middlesbrough team bus yeah, at the took training ground. Drive, yeah. Uh, yeah, took it for a crashed drive, it. crashed it. Ten, <laughs> ten grand's worth of damage. <laughs> he walked into the Middlesbrough canteen once uh, just wearing his uh, training socks and uh, it's, it's something what? about a sausage. What's his, what's his member on the plate and said, can I have some beans with me sausage? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> hang, on, hang on, going back to the £10,000 worth of damage in Middlesbrough. Yeah. <laughs> what did he crash into? <laughs> oh, oh, very good. Oh, Pass, oh, very good. Yeah. Pass. Do you hear that? Yeah. Um, I think this was when he was at Middlesbrough, but I'm not sure. And it, when they were playing away in London once, did he? Um, did he not? There was there was a workman in, on the street with a pneumatic drill, and he jumped out and he was like, "Give us a go on that." Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Story. Yeah. Was that at Middlesbrough? I'm, I'm not sure when it I've, was, but I've it happened. This, you know? I've heard the story. He did. I'm not sure if it was at Middlesbrough. Maybe people can fill us in. It, when he went, someone booted they were training. And someone booted the ball over the fence. He went, "Oh, I'll go and get that." I think it was at Rangers. And, and he went and he went and jumped on the fence and just completely disappeared. <laughs> and apparently, I'm not sure if it's true. Nobody could get hold of it. He, and he disappeared for 24 hours, and apparently to the minute, 24 hours later, he jumped back over the fence of the ball and went, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so he likes a 24 hour like. Yeah, they, they all turned up to training, didn't they? Rio Ferdinand, take note. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you do a murky. Gazza is just the sort of person I can imagine he would just overwhelm you with his personality. Do you know what oh, I mean? Oh, yeah. yeah. The, the, these pranks are just. Be like a kid around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, 
he he left uh, Robson's uh, Brian Robson's Middlesbrough in 2000, and uh, he joined Walter Smith at Everton. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean that kind of made sense to Gascoigne. Yeah. You know, he played under the man and, and respected him greatly. Gaza was shortly. Uh, you know, after joining Everton, he was checking into the um, the Arizona Rehabilitation Clinic. Mm. Um, but he did play, um, you know, he did play all right Everton in, in, in bits again. It just... I remember him being very sporadic at Everton. It was pretty yeah. the beginning of the end, though, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, if that, I think that was the trouble with, with Gascoigne. It was always a bit bitty. He was never going to so be one of those problems. players who, who, who said, right, that's it. Because he lived for football. Do you remember yeah, that Alan Hansen right. documentary? That's right. And he said, and he, he was talking to Gascoigne, and, and Gascoigne was talking about, um, you know, things like, um, oh yeah, I can still get back in the England squad and stuff. And, and Alan Hansen was like, what, you, you know, what are you talking about? And it basically turned out, that, like, you know, he's got nothing. He had nothing to replace the mm. football with, you know, and that was that was his main problem. If he could have played football every waking minute, yes. he'd been fine. Absolutely, Absolutely fine. You know, yeah. it, was just, it was just between once he got off that pitch, it was when the trouble started. No, know? very much. And so. the Everton thing I remember was the, sort of the beginning of the end, around mm. the sort of turn of the century. Yeah, but I, I do remember a couple of good performances. Oh, he did. Though. He still had the ability. Yeah. Of course, you know, like, like we were saying about, about Ronaldinho earlier, he's always yeah. going to have that ability. You know, Paul Gascoigne would have that ability in his feet as long as he can stand. You know, mm. There's no doubt about that. You know, but Walter Smith left Everton in, in March uh, 2002. And and, and, and Gaza, he moved on there and he went to Didn't play... Didn't Moyes want to keep him? I, I think, Moyes, I think Moyes said, him. yeah, you'd, you'd be included, you know, in the squad and all, but, yeah. uh, but I think Gaza knew his time there was up and, yeah. and he went to uh, Burnley for the remainder of the mm. 2002 season. Mm. Well, I saw, I saw, I've seen Paul Gascoigne play twice, actually. I've seen yeah. him play once for Burnley, which... Which I'd rather not remember. I okay. re remember Gascoigne for the good things. He wasn't that great then, and I think it was you know it was Paul Gascoigne the name rather than. I think mm. he may have even been signed for people at Burnley. The players yeah. could be like, oh, I'm playing with Paul Gascoigne. You know, give yeah. him a bit of a lift. Sure, yeah. But I actually saw him play in, a t in, a, in Paul. Remember Paul Walsh? Yeah. yeah. For his testimonial no, okay. at Fratton Park, he came down and played. He was well, excellent. Nice. It was really good fun. And, oh, and everyone promising. got on the pitch at the end. And, it, and the, the measure of how many how many people love Gascoigne and how well loved he is is that when everyone invaded the pitch, as, as was back then the sort of custom yeah. in a testimonial where. Every Everyone was straight over to Gascoigne. He never played for Pompey. Everyone no, was straight over right. to him and he was surrounding him and stuff. Oh. So I actually saw Paul Gascoigne play the Pompey show, which was great. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah, and after that, he had sort of brief spells in the Chinese second division, funnily enough. That was a documentary as well, wasn't that it? Was, that, was a, yeah. that was a sad sort of statement. Yeah, yeah. Sure. And, then, and then he was um, player coach at Boston United, but again, these just lasted yeah. a handful of games at yeah. most. And, Kettering uh, as well, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, he managed Kettering. I think it was 39 days or something yeah. he was in charge. And then he announced his uh, full retirement in 2004. Um, in August 2006, he visited uh, Botswana on behalf of the FA's International Outreach Week and played football with uh, the children from the uh, SOS Children's Village there. And that's the image I like. Yeah, yeah of course. You I, know. I, the reason I genuinely think if we can get someone to sort him out and he can sort himself out, and hopefully he is doing that, mm. um, it could be a real asset to, to lots of different clubs. or yeah. Because just because the ability he's got and just because mm. of the, the fun loving nature he's got and if he can harness that then he's still got a yeah. part to play on if think. someone mm. could take him under the, their wing as a coach mm. and just sort of really sort of rein him in then it, it could be it could be invaluable I've long been of the opinion that people at the FA and rather than sort of um, take, adopting this attitude of especially when he was at his peak I mean he, uh, from all these things you've been saying, like from very early on when he was doing this and doing that, you could see the seeds were there, being ready to grow as him being a bit unstable. The FA, I know it's not their responsibility necessarily, but now, or maybe a few years ago, the FA could have done a whole lot more to look after mm -hmm. him, you know. He's not someone, some people need looking after, you know, and some, and I, I just think, and I may be part of the mark, of the mark but I think that. In other countries, he may have been looked after a bit better. Do you know, maybe they would have taken the time to sort of make make sure he was okay, and maybe do a little bit more for him. And, and I think the FA could have done a bit more, perhaps. Well, apparently Peter Beardsley recently has been doing a lot to help him out, like keeping his fridge stuck with like fruit and milk and stuff has like he? that, and really, That's really nice looking after him, which is great. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like yeah. that. Early in uh, the career of Paul Gascoigne, the footballer, the Juventus president uh, Giannini uh, Agnelli described Gazza as uh, a dog of war with the face of a child. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> Isn't it just? <laughs> yeah. But uh, Paul Gascoigne said recently that um, that he said, "I've learnt that I just want to be respected for what I achieved on the pitch. I know I haven't achieved much of it, but I do know I've given pleasure to people watching me play football." Yeah, absolutely. Nice. As and, and he is so yeah. dearly loved still yeah. Yeah. by it's, so many yeah. people. It's a testament. To, I mean, in a way, I mean, a lot of the stuff he's done, which has been silly, and the things he's done that have been pretty abhorrent off the pitch, it's, it's a testament to how actually good he was as a footballer. Yeah. That people mm. still revere him in this country very right? much. And, so. and, that, and that says more for his ability and his talent than, than anyone else could say. Paul Gascoigne, welcome.